I'm here to tell you about the fantastic Name the Game series from Australian Football Video. Now there's over 200 games available, including final series, state games, night premierships, and the best home and away matches of the 91 and 92 seasons. Not just the highlights, not just the last quarter, but a hundred minutes of top footy action. So pick up your free catalogue at any Brasher store. And remember, footy brings out the best in a person. Questa quella per me pari sono a guardare mentre d'intorno, d'intorno vivevo, del mio cuore l'impero non cedo, o meglio ad una che ad altra beltà, la costura. You know, Fremantle is a pretty special sort of place. Most Western Australians know that, but many of us are only fairly recent converts drawn here to the port city after it was spruced up for the America's Cup defence in 1986. But for people who are Fremantle born and bred, this place has always had something special. That's something that sets it apart from the rest of Perth and makes them proud to be known as Fremantle folk. And now they have something else. Now they have their own football team. But there's nothing new about footy in Freer. Gentlemen, uh, I think this is a very exciting day for football, Australian football in Western Australia. Uh, we're delighted to uh, announce that the AFL Commission has approved the entry of a second team from Western Australia into the AFL competition in 1995. We agree with the uh, Western Australian Football Commission that. Uh, the preference is uh, that this side is a Fremantle-based team. There it is! The Sharks have won the 1994 Grand Final. What we want uh, is for the new club to be welcomed by the, by the whole of the West Australian football community, except for the Eagles supporters perhaps, and we want uh, the Fremantle football community in particular to get behind it. Because let me tell you that South Fremantle have won the 1980 Grand Final. 23 goals, 18, 156. It's our view that uh, uh, to better balance the national competition, that we should have two teams uh, playing out of Western Australia. And uh, it was really then just a case of determining uh, the timing. Uh, we looked at uh, 94 some little time ago and uh, we mutually agreed that 94 probably wasn't the best uh, time to do it uh, for a couple of reasons. Um, one of them was that we weren't going to give enough planning time to put the team together and we all know that we gave uh, the West Coast Eagles uh, minimal time to, to set up and uh, I think that had some impact on their early performances. And the game is really on. Tell the story. Let's just sit back and watch the action. 
Yes, the rivalry has always been good, but friendly. Like South Metal players were off the field, were just as friendly as what uh, EC Metal players were. It was really great. That was the prediction. Cormac hit behind the play, and the blue and whites are showing what it's all about. Peak oh. is in there, out goes Peak. How important then that Fremantle was the base for this new club as opposed to any other urban area of Perth? Well, the first team is what we would call a composite side. It was a, it was a side that was not made up of any uh, one block of, uh, of people or clubs or supporters. Uh, so it was very important to, uh, to see a very clear characteristic come out in the new club. And in our discussions with the Commission, it was, it was always going to be Fremantle. It had to be Fremantle. They, um, they had their clear differentiation from, from the people who were uh, supporting uh, uh, the West Coast, despite the fact that quite a few Fremantle uh, supporters were indeed supporting the West Coast. But they were the group that could easily split away and feel quite self-contained and uh, have, a, have a, an area um, in Western Australia that was, that was clearly differentiated and, uh, and obviously an area of very fervent supporters. Hey! Hey! As you drive into Freo there's, there's just a great feeling. There's sort of, the town's always buzzing, there's people around and to play footy in there, AFL footy, will be uh, really exciting. It is very special. I mean, I've only played with South Fremantle for a year and already I, I, I feel like uh, I've got a very close relationship with Fremantle, the, the town and the people themselves, and they're a great, very, very strong followers of football, very passionate in their, in their football beliefs and followings, and I'm, I'm proud to be a part of it. And um, It's I'm, got a real tradition, hasn't it? Oh, it has. And, uh, yeah, just, just talk to some of the old, the old, um, the old players and you hear the history and the, and the tra tradition. It's, uh, it's quite mind-blowing sometimes. It was always inevitable that something like that was going to happen when the Eagles came into the competition and I suppose they had to have uh, someone on the other side of town, so uh, it had to be Fremantle. I mean, you know, they get behind whatever happens in that area and uh, they're just a very good club um, and they love their footy. They just love the footy down that area and, uh, and I, I know that they'll support it very well. Right over the half forward line towards Johnson and Johnson takes the mark in front of uh, Joe Lawson, about 40 yards directly in front of Old East Goals. Well, here's a great opportunity for the captain coach to bring up the first East Fremantle goal. Kicked 100 goals during the year. Let's watch him with this one. Listen to the crowd. I do love uh, East Fremantle, and I do love the Fremantle people. Fremantle's a pretty yeah. special place, isn't it? Well, it's, it's got great history. Uh, I mean, you, you look at, at the great players that, that East Fremantle had, as I mentioned, Jack Clark, you had Ray Sorrell, uh, Normie Rogers and so on, uh, Percy Johnson, right? Uh, Stevie Marsh, these are history, blokes, blokes that, are, that have got history written all over them, you know? Uh, and then you, you can go to uh, South Fremantle and, uh, and they had John Jerovich, uh, they had Toddy, uh, Gary Scott. What about Tommy Grulizic? You know, great, great footballers. But then, um, when the game, you, we we hated one another. You'd you'd really sort of cross the border. You hated South Fremantle that much, and they hated East Fremantle. But then you'd uh, you'd go down to the Roma restaurant or cafe in Fremantle, and and you'd run into one another, and you had great meals down there. And Frank, uh, the the owner of the place, I think he still got it. He plays a Jewish piano there. But fantastic place, great history. His Excellency meets John Todd and now Jack Sheedy. Tosses the coin, Sheedy calls heads. It's come down tails and Harper has won the toss. His Excellency, accompanied by the league president, Mr. Roger Gay, leads the field. John Todd, the young South Fremantle Rover, and Sandow. Well, Lander. going back many years, and people don't realise that uh, Eastern Mountain and South Fremantle trained on the same oval. And uh, there was great power strengths between the two. And uh, when Eastern Mountain were powerful, they used to push South Fremantle to one pocket and not allow them to have much of the oval. And then when South Fremantle became very, became very strong, they started to push East Fremantle back a touch, and 
So they always used to work on the wharf and there was just great rivalry and the derbies back in those days were just uh, super, super special. Well, Sigatoste sweeping through. Still has the ball in his possession. Tackled by Shields. Sigatoste back on his feet again. Down he goes again. Give him a kick, Monty. Free metal jumper is something that you aspire to ever since you went to South Terrace Primary School and something you, uh, as you were brought up, you heard of the feats of the guys during the golden era. You wanted to sort of emulate their deeds. And when you played in a derby, you absolutely despised the opposition and still do today. Uh, I, I highly respect their club and it's great to see that they produce so many great footballers, but on derby day, once we crossed that white line, it was war. Over to Bahaja, centre half forward. He can line them up from here if he wants to, can Tony Bahaja? He's kicked two already, lines them up. And if the last goal was a sealer, that one is for sure. I suppose it's just a passion for football. I, I mean, we don't have much to do down at Fremantle. There's not a lot, so I suppose we all just sort of have a, a love of football and uh, and it's sort of gone from there. I don't know, maybe it's the port. I mean, Port Melbourne, it's the same over there, and, and Port Adelaide. There's something about Fremantle, we're just addicted to, to football. The Fremantle Football Club was conceived, if you like, by the Australian Football League and the West Australian Football Commission. But that was just the start of a long and sometimes painful pregnancy. It was a process that included a search for a true Fremantle identity. A search that turned up some fairly unusual suggestions. logo and colours. It will not accept second best. Well, it may be fashionable today. If we do develop alternative strips, um, the, sh the shorts can be whatever colour we like. We haven't actually discussed with the AFL the options in terms of shorts. but We felt that uh, in terms of, of names, logos, uniforms and so forth, um, uh, we had a very traditional look about us in the AFL. Uh, it's very difficult to change traditions and uh, many of the clubs, particularly in Victoria, uh, really were not prepared to uh, adopt more modern approaches to uh, design and so forth, uh, simply because, uh, uh, you know, uh, traditions are, are very hard to get, one doesn't easily throw them away. So whilst we are starting from scratch, you might as well try and do something a little bit different. There was the campaign run by Channel 7 and the West Australian which attracted I think around 5,000 entries with Vikings and Pirates and Flamingos and Jailers and, and all sorts of things and so the public were really interested and it went on for quite a time because we were determined to come up with, uh, with a name that, that fitted Fremantle and fitted the club. Although this screen is less vibrant than the Viper that we had there um, but again, it works quite nicely with this Purple is the single most popular colour in US um, sports marketing at the moment. But the thing that came through most importantly from our point of view was the fact that Fremantle's uniqueness is generated by um, human traits, uh, the humanity of, uh, of work and the work ethic of uh, success through toil and those sorts of things. Crossover sort of effect, but we actually turned it more into a singlet. What we were looking for was an image which embodied the spirit of Fremantle uh, and the traditional elements of Fremantle, but was um, uh, used in a way which was contemporary and, and modern and moved away from the, uh, the normal uh, graphic styles of, uh, of AFL football. The logo, the, the, the powerful logo, is, is terrific. That was immediately uh, from uh, the interim board had wide acceptance. Everyone had plenty of debate on uh, on colours and names and everything else. But as soon as that logo was presented, everyone said, "Terrific! That's that's great." There's still some work to be done on the colours because they're not exactly as we seem to quite have specified. Right. 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 Yeah. You allowed us to sit in on the meeting where they presented their uh, their final submission to you. There were some fairly startled faces. Um, I don't know about startled faces. I, I, I suppose uh, initially um, uh, a different approach 
definitely. Uh, I think it's the first logo that actually has a human being in it. Uh, as you know, um, most of the other logos have animals or birds of some sort, uh, other than maybe Carlton, which is just called the Blues. Um, so in that respect, it was different, but it was, uh, it was clearly uh, appropriate too. I mean, we, we have human supporters, uh, they're very real people, and uh, why not uh, reflect that in the logo? It's my great pleasure on behalf of the board of the Fremantle Football Club, on behalf of the West Australian Football Commission and the Australian Football Commission, to introduce you to the Fremantle Dockers. How do you think Victorian people perceive Fremantle, the wider Fremantle? Not with a lot of thought. I mean, I think, and as I said, it's not uh, this superior attitude. I mean, we may be perceived as, as holding that view, but I don't believe that. I just think that we're so preoccupied with the traditional VFL and, and, and the remnants of the, the domestic competition that we had that we don't spend a lot of time thinking about. We will think a lot more about Fremantle when their football team appears on the ground, and particularly when they start winning games. When it eventually came out, what was the reaction here to the name, logo, colours, the identity package? I like it. I mean, it, I'm conservative by nature, and when I first heard it, heard the name and saw the logo, I wanted to sort of digest it for a while. But I think the logo is very strong, um, and clearly it's got sort of the cultural links to uh, the team it represents. Um, and the colour scheme, I like that too, particularly the away strip. I reckon that looks great. They've done it far better than what Brisbane did in similar circumstances and I think that's a reflection of the, uh, the football culture that exists in Perth that wasn't there in Brisbane. And so the Dockers had an identity, but while the search for a name had been going on, so too had the search for the right person to take the helm of the new club. Kevin Sheedy was mentioned as was Robert Shaw, but of course Sheedy stayed with Essendon and Robert Shaw went to the Adelaide Crows. All the while, the popular local choice had been Gerard Neesham, a man born and bred in East Fremantle, and one with a remarkably successful reputation after engineering four premierships in just seven seasons at Claremont. But what about that style they insist on calling chip and draw? Neesham. That's why they call him the general, you know. Played a tremendous year, been an ornament to the game. Nisham, who was a cucumber. The man who's marshalled this claim on side, not only this afternoon, but this season, Gerard Nisham. Do this so often, draw the man, Delaney's got it now. Nisham's style of footy. I don't think you can describe it that simplistically. You know, it's, a, it's a, quite a complex style and takes a long time to actually coach and train. And uh, I think all I'd like to say is I hope it is a modern style of football and uh, it definitely blends in with the modern style of sport where, you know, you have to be able to attack and defend depending on which positions you play. So the chip and draw is a, quite a humorous thing for me because it's anything but that. OK, you're all family. You're going to have to get pretty close to get it. <laughs> How do you reckon we got this many? <laughs> Oh, yeah, you can see Teddy. Teddy, 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 from home and comes right away in the run of the post. A great win to Galilee, scoring by two lengths officially from right fingers. A close third duo of... You used to get a lot of good advice from a lot of good people. 
and uh, and you couldn't wish for uh, for greater supporters. How good a bloke is Jared? Jared, Jared's a great guy, and um, you know we all love him, and we're all behind him, and um, and doesn't matter what happens with the Dockers, uh, it will not affect Jared whatsoever. We used to all come together every Sunday for dinner, or or evening meal every Sunday when I was uh, young, and we used to you know, uh, play together. So when I was young, I was uh, mixing with, you know, Michael Regan, Con Regan, all the Regans. And so, yeah, and that, that type of thing. And we used to just like the success of uh, members of the family. So you are built, you know, you were brought up to firstly enjoy other people's success. And also, I suppose you had really good role models. A wobbly old kick. Will it get the distance? No, marked by Con Regan right in the teeth of the goal. He plays on to Trizzy Lawrence. John Dethridge. And Con Regan coming through strongly. Not be holding the ball. Jared has yet to be proven in AFL ranks, but you've only, only got to look at his record in waffle uh, competition to, pr to prove that he is a good coach. But my understanding, and I've been in football now for well over 50 years, a person from England could come out and coach by the rule book. I mean, you don't have to be too bright to know the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. But if you've got a brick wall in that straight line, there's a hell of a way to drive a car. There it is. Claremont have won the grand final. Nisha Moore smiles. His players have done it for him again. He's a master coach, a master tactician. He had the players at his disposal. Jared's worked out the way to do it. He's worked out, he's, he's bought a lot of sports, mainly water polo, rugby, football, soccer. He's brought everything into one thing and he's got the finer points. And it's an insult to Australian mentality that it took a, a kid like Jerry to come along and show all these experts how to play football. The chip and draw description is too simple, isn't it? Too simple. They criticised Ishi Mandel in their, in their heydays at the 1946 undefeated side, the short passing game, because people that said, called it a short passing game didn't understand it. What it was is you kicked a man on his own. Now, whether that was... 30 yards or 70 yards made no difference. You kick to a man. Now, Jared put a, an emphasis on that, that he, he, he chips and draws, he, he, he helps the player with the ball, and he uses the ball. He doesn't just give it away. And it's a, it's a wonderful style of football, and it'll take some stopping. The ball to the centre of the ground. Harry Neesham takes a good mark right in the centre of the ground. Pulled around the neck. And Empire Woods looks like awarding 15 yards. He yes, Harry Neesham to be awarded 15 yards. It's creating the advantage at the point of where the, the play is and creating, to create that advantage. They say chip and draw, it's hand pass or small kick or whatever, but basically what they don't understand is that in doing that, and that's not, not really what it's about, but in doing it you actually put a player totally out of the, out of the competition. He is no longer a threat and you are left with a, a, a man able to score. That's really what it's about. You've got to go flat out, mate. It's, it's the wrong colours. You get over there and you man a man on him. When we've gone man to man across the board, one person to one person, they've gone, oh, yeah, get the ball, mate. Bullshit. Tackle. You're on the ground, goal. Next one, you're on the ground. Where do you think they've gone? No. OK, explain the philosophy then. Well, the, the basic philosophy is too complex to explain. The basic philosophy is you have to be able to identify an advantage and take maximum use of that, and you have to be able to defend both as a forward and a defender, and attack both as a forward and a defender. And so what, what I think Aussie rules is moving towards is becoming a complete sport, and most other sports have already moved there. Abraham, who's been very impressive since coming out of the ground, he's got plenty of speed away, he comes again, kicks inside the 50 on the lead bar. So what things do you look for in sports people? Your players, what do you look for? What qualities are important? They have to be able to actually, uh, they have to be very competitive, prepared to learn. I think that's really important that a player is prepared to actually, well, has to be an intelligent sportsman. Um, I like them to be uh, quiet, as in, uh, in winning, and even quieter when they lose. So, you know, just, I suppose, a lot of the things that you saw Hawthorne, and not that we're actually copying them or would like to copy them, but there's a lot of things I, people admired in Hawthorne, and I think a lot of their qualities are, uh, are probably very important for any team. Down to Browning, Swan's teaming better at the moment. He'll look for Nisham, who uh, does a very good blind turn, 
Over to right again. A long kick this time by right. But Browning. Nisham calling for it for Morwa, but he goes longer than that. Finds Silvio. Mr. Hunt today with the bank manager. Yeah. Jude's a very determined fella. Knew, you know, what he wants in life. And uh, I think that's been reflected with his success that he's had with Claremont. And... Uh, where he's won, you know, three or four premierships, and uh, I think, you know, he'll do very well, um, you know, with the coach of the new Fremantle side. Did you ever imagine when you were coaching uh, Jared that he would one day follow in your footsteps and become a coach? Yeah, I think so, because, he, as I said before, he's a pretty deep thinker about the game and um, very involved in it, and, uh, you know, Jared was, um, even then, wanted to make a career out of football, and unfortunately his playing career was cut short out of, over here. Uh, through injury, but um, it doesn't surprise me that Jerry's gone on to be a coach and uh, be a successful coach. If there is a downside to this job, is it this oh, media, the intrusion on the family? No, it's the, I think it's the fact that you actually uh, you lose your privacy, and that's. And that's a real dilemma. You're very protective of your family, aren't you? Oh yeah, but well, yeah. And they, I mean, they all like it. I mean, they understand that that's it's a, a requirement of the job, and and I think it is. I mean, it's a really important requirement that you have to actually front the media, whether it's uh, in good conditions or adverse conditions. terrific the other day coming into Darwin and uh, the boys at the cameras were there waiting for me and I walked past them they didn't realise who I was. Because <laughs> well, last time you were here you had hair. Yeah that's right <laughs> and a beard probably but uh, more hair on the head and it was really uh, it was really hilarious because they actually came over later and uh, oh yeah, sorry mate you know they were all apologetic and I was just really happy. <laughs> Don't run out of the plane. Oh, they didn't kick it to me. We've got to kick it to someone, and you're it. So, is there anybody you really want to stick it up oh, with this no. with this job? No, no, no I haven't. Those things don't drive me. You know, no, not at all. I actually just really keen to get in there and uh, produce a team that's that's exciting. It actually plays with a bit of flair. That people are really happy to come along and watch and uh, and and can see the the, the development of a young footballer and, uh, and and the development of a young football team. I think, you know, it's, football is the most exciting sport in the world. I've seen most of them and uh, and to play it in that manner to me is, is uh, really important. Having a name, a set of club colours and a coach was a fair start for the Dockers, but of course being a footy club is all about having football players. Gerard Neesham established a coaching staff that included Neil Danaher from Essendon and his own former assistant at Claremont in Mark Riley. Between them, they've drawn together some established AFL stars and some of the best available talent from the WAFL. For a centering kick, looking for Allen. Yep. Yes. With Fremantle certainly going to be uh, more of a, you know, obviously a leadership role and perhaps teaching some of the younger players what I've learned in the last five years. They put you on the spot. How many of the guys out there tonight do you know? I'm, I've got a, uh, I've got to learn four names every night, so I should should know them all by, in a couple of weeks. That was fairly easy. There was no, no real challenge in it. So now we'll just start throwing it around on the different names. And as we throw it, if you don't know the person's name, at that stage we're still getting to know each other's names and uh, and we'd come from the eight different local clubs and from all over different parts of Australia 
And uh, I think the camaraderie in the, in the club already is, is definitely where I'd like it to be. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, last staple there in your left hand, Jerry. You've got some pictures of you jumping off a pole about 40 feet up in the air with a blindfold on. So, can you remember that? Yeah. Talk me through it. Well, it's actually, it's actually a lot easier with a blindfold. That's the truth. I mean, because if you, you're not looking down and worried about what's down. So, so you get up there and uh, I suppose it's the end of the day. You're totally confident in the security you have because you actually uh, harnessed up and you know the people down there are actually going to pull the harness or pull the rope so you don't fall. Up, so uh, that was really the whole aim, is actually, you know, the attachment to, to, your, to your teammates and the attachment to your coaching staff and, and a bit of trust in them. So to go up that pole, blindfold and jump off, was to me no issue because I knew a couple of the blokes hanging on to the end of the rope. From behind, hooks it down. Waters has got it. Back to goal. He's right on the 50. Has a look towards goal. It's a pretty good effort. Great kick. Ben and myself, almost every night, we have a chat about the way things are going and you know what we can achieve just with the next training run that we're doing. So I guess we're pretty aware of how important, seeing we don't have too many senior players, how important our role is. But uh, you know, when, when it does come down to it, the youngest player can be a leader themselves. I mean, you don't have to have played 80, 90, 100 games to be a leader. So, you know, we're really relying on a lot of the young guys. We've got exceptional talent just to, uh, to come through. to do away from footy? Oh, pretty much anything to do with the water. Um, it's easy to please me that way. Jet skiing, scuba diving, surfing, um, just heading down the beach. I and mean, that's where I really relax. Well, those jet skis are fairly hard handlebars, don't they? They do, mate. And you've got to, if you're going to have some fun on them, you've got to push it to the edge too. So, you know, I was having a good time on it. Hey, Jerry, what's the score? Yeah, Jerry, What about the car? Tell me about this car. My car? Oh, mate, I've always liked old cars. Before I had the, before I had the Mustang, I had a HR, which unfortunately was stolen, but the HR was a good car too, so no, I just like old cars. So what's special about the Mustang? It's mine, mate. No, it's, I always wanted to, to get a Mustang when I was younger. I sort of always liked the car, so I've got one now. I'll just have it for a few years yet too. The HR was a fairly stable car. Are you a hoon again now? No, I'm, I'm not a rev head. I don't drive around fast, although when I was younger I had a few altercations with the law, but um, these days I just, with an old car, you've got to look after them, so I sort of just, just cruise around. With Susanna Carr and Rick Arden, this is Seven Nightly News. Even though we put in a pretty good effort, you always want to win. So... Uh, <laughs> however, our first AFL game... Uh, 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 so, uh, you know, I mean, I keep it all in perspective. Um, I'm a footballer first before I'm, you know, any sort of media personality or anything. But, uh, you know, it's just an interest that I'd like to pursue. Um, you know, the people at uh, Channel 7 have been excellent in, in helping me get involved. So, you know, I'll just, I'll see where it takes me. I mean, bottom line is, you know, I want to try and do a good job and have a bit of fun as well. So, yeah, it should be good. Defence towards midfield. Wills gathers the bouncing ball. He's got toe. He breaks away. Kicks down towards half forward. Flood is favoured by the kick. Like over here, you can walk down the street and no one knows who I am, which is good because in Geelong. That'll change. Yeah, well, it probably will. I don't know, but you hope it does, I suppose. If you're playing well, people begin to realise who you are. Well, it means you're playing well or you're playing very badly, one or the other. But um, in Geelong, like there, you know, they're pretty parochial, even though it's not quite as big as Perth or anything like that. But. Wills wants it. That's the target. Wills settles in front. From behind, Wills by great grab in front. Great work from Wills. He ran 150 metres to get that one. Wills takes him on. Gets by Wills. Bold. Kicks from 35. Oh, great goal! But, um, 
decided the week previewing up that I've been struggling a bit and that I decided to run with the ball as much as I could. Um, it's just a spur of the moment thing that I took off around the bloke and kicked the goal. The kick started off like it was in the middle of the points and without the wind or anything, just a bad kick, I think it swung back towards the goals, which was good. So, you yeah, know, it was a great feeling. Round one, selection one is Freeman. One, six, six, seven, Jeff White, Southern Stingrays. Very excited about going over the number ball. Um, and I'm just looking forward to it. Why? Oh, it's just AFL. I play AFL, new club, 35,000 members. Um, you know, I've got family over there, great support. Uh, that's what I'm looking forward to. Knowing that I'm number one for three medal doesn't mean I'm the number one in Australia, so that's how I look at it. Good afternoon, Mr. Young, can help you. The defence looks pretty good and they're playing pretty well in defence at the moment. Uh, Riley has been very good this afternoon, comes away with it. The highlight in the low light was the grand final. I mean, we've done so much work to get there and um, there's so many good moments along the way, but the actual game was, you know, was terrible. It was um, certainly a low light. Look at this again, Evans topped it off. Sumich is going to kick it over, Riley's head for goal. It's not good enough, Geelong. Have you watched the grand final? No, I haven't. Um, the biggest disappointment with the grand final was not that we lost, but the way we just um, capitulated in the last quarter and they virtually ran over us, which was very disappointing. So how does Stephen O'Reilly plan to make up for that? I mean, you can't make up for things that happened in the past, but um, I mean, all you can do is go out there each week and do your best and try as hard as you can, and, and that's all you can do and try and win each week. There's no use worrying about the past. Well, I'm working with Ernest and Young. It's, um, they're very supportive of football too. At the same time, they, I've got to respect that um, they're a very hard-working family. They need work done too, so let's have to juggle those two and see how things go. And this is your office? Well, I wish it was, but maybe one day. <laughs> Tackle, Quentin Leach. And he to kick the halfback, Adard and Leach. Oh, he's just too good today. Terrific aerialist, isn't he? Yep. Beautiful mark by Leach. Pretty well tailor-made for, uh, for AFL. He's very strong, very quick. And I think he's one of those players that will make the, the transition very, very quickly. And uh, I think he's uh, be great to have uh, another five or six of him. You were actually the first footballer to wear the Fremantle Dockers outfit, weren't you? Yeah, that was another reason why I did it. Become a part of history. Twist so you're not sort of so straight on to me. Do I feel like it's good for it? You might need to move. Just forget that you're being photographed. Oh, yeah, that happened. Uh, it, I was training for Claremont one night and Jared sort of looked at me and said, you know, you're the one, and I, I didn't understand what he was talking about. And I, later on that night, he told me that how are you going to use me for the uh, for the big poster? And I, I didn't really, I wasn't really that interested to start with because I, I hadn't, you know, been picked up or anything. The team hadn't really even started yet. But then I thought, you know, it'll be good for me, and uh, why not? So I did it. Days fishing or a day surfing, maybe down south. I'll definitely be going down south and my break is coming out. So surfing and fishing, I have to say. What do you want to achieve from football for your future life? Hopefully you get to know a lot of people in the football business. Play football, you know, at least for eight years, I hope. And get enough money then to support myself and then after that just uh, continue bringing in money from some sort of business that I get from playing football. And make enough money to go fishing and have a surf. That's right, yeah. Spend my weekends to myself. 
rather than working. Outside the square, Bell! Beautiful mark over the top of uh, Hendry. Hit a bell, a Korean by Burr. Goes from 40 metres out. Big. Kick two so far this afternoon. He's now got three, and South's trailed by just four points. Managing time's probably the... the the, the best or the most important thing for me as well as uh, the ability to make sacrifices and for me some people say you know oh, I'm not going out on a Friday night or you know not going away with your mates on a weekend trip is a really hard decision to make you know, because I want to play football for me those decisions are made in an instance I mean it's not a hard decision at all it's look you got a goal there sitting there you got two choices you go or you stay and you work hard and you got to you got to pick to work hard all the time or else someone else is going to be doing that and you're behind the eight ball from the start and you really want to get any edge on any other person that you can and uh, I see that as a very easy decision to make. Not that you're going to get a lot of time for it uh, in the year ahead but when you can get away from football what do you like to do? It's pretty hard for me to say I'll get away from footy because there wouldn't be an hour in the day go by where I'm not thinking of footy in some way uh, whether it, I like to relax just you know maybe play around a golf or go down the beach um, but pretty much I've always bring my footy with me anyway, so it's, uh, it's not something I want, I really want to get away from. I want uh, the footy to be around and I want to be thinking footy as much as possible. And from what we saw at Adventure World, there's probably no career in uh, Formula One coming up, is there? No, I don't think so. I had a bit of trouble there. The boys, uh, they wouldn't let me uh, get a clear run on the straight. I was a bit uh, down about that, but I had the fastest car too. But uh, I don't think Adventure World would be too keen to have me back there either. <laughs> Uh, coming from the waffle who really make his mark. Storming his way through Nettleback. He's aided there by Edwards. I mean, I'd love to make the finals. I mean, there's no reason why, why we can't. But others will say we'll struggle to win a game. So it's, I mean, if we won between round eight games, perhaps a few more would be all right. We, uh, we felt that if they could get five or six wins, that would be a terrific effort in the first year. Now, from uh, observation at this stage, one would have to say that uh, that's a real possibility given the players that they've been able to put together. This is Abraham breaking away. Towards the wing, going on one of those searching runs again. I would think that they're going to be unrealistic in Perth. I think they'll probably be aiming and hoping for seven or eight wins, and I don't believe that's, uh, that's feasible. I think if they can win four, they will have done very well. Skipping back was Burrows, a big leap too. Got hands to it, finds the ball brilliantly on the ground. He's got the goal. I'm sure they'd like to win the Premiership somewhere in the future, but to actually see us working towards that is the most important thing. We've, we've, I've heard you know, from no games to ten games to two games to five, and. I just like to meet the ones who say no because I, I'd, um, I wouldn't want having a look at that. They'll have their ups and they'll have their downs, but that's what it's all about. Yeah, I'd like to see them succeed and uh, it's great to have two teams in town where you can go along and get a feeding from argument on a Saturday afternoon when they meet.
Australian Football Video is proud to present the Perfect Prezi. In fact, a range of over 100 Perfect Prezis. You can choose from player profiles, value packed back-to-back -back packs, special events, and fantastic compilations. Only from Australian Football Video. So elbow your way into any sensible retail outlet and buy a Prezi that's sure to please. I'd like to see that, Harry.